So this should give me AWS credentials to access as this room. That's so crazy. Full compromise AWS. <laughs> yeah, we've currently gone from just write access to Apple request in GitHub to Kubernetes admin to AWS admin. Alrighty. Hey, welcome back, Carlos, Ignacio, all my great friends from Halborn. Look, this is it. This is the finale. This is all the time that we spent together leading up to this moment, chatting about CICD, DevOps, infrastructure as code, digging into Terraform, digging into Kubernetes and AWS. Uh, and now I think we've got hey, one last sweet demo and show and tell for us. But uh, hey, thanks so much for all of you doing this incredible stuff. I know you're doing all this incredible work at Halborn for security audits and assessments, seeing these horror stories and nightmare scenarios in the real world. Uh, but I don't know, Ignacio, can you sort of bring us home here? What is the last firework you'd like to set off off the tails of our previous video? <laughs> yeah, so in our previous video, we left a bit of a cliffhanger. Uh, we we're starting to talk about Crossplane, which is this Kubernetes tool that allows us to create uh, AWS resources from Kubernetes Manifest. Uh, which is really cool, just having all your configuration for your application, uh, both like inside Kubernetes and the cloud provider. So you could have how many pods you want of a certain application and also what's the size of your database in the same place, uh, what secrets you have in AWS, uh, what I am uh, roles you're using, all of that is in the same place. So it's really cool. But that also means that your Kubernetes cluster in some place, it has some credentials to create stuff in AWS. And that's what we're going to be exploiting now. Uh, by default, Crossplane does have an uh, AWS admin role. You can change it. I've never seen it changed. Uh, I've worked with a company to change it and make it less privileged and have like a permission boundary. So even though you can, because the thing is, even if you remove all of the the permissions that you don't use. Most companies will use this to create IAM roles for their services. So their service has like a service account that assumes a role in AWS. So if we're trying to create IAM roles, what prevents us from creating an IAM role that is admin? Like there's nothing preventing us from doing that. So what you can do is have a permission boundary on that role. So it cannot create roles that are more powerful than themselves or, or things like that. So essentially, you wouldn't gain admin access. You would only gain the same level of access as a Crossplane has. So let's go ahead and, and get started into the action. So what we have here is uh, first like a, a demo of what this is normally used for. Here, we have a Crossplane resource of the type role. And it is creating a role called read S3. As that might imply, it allows us to read from S3, list and get from S3. And basically, it, it, creates, that, it creates that role, that policy, and attaches the policy to the role. Uh, pretty straightforward. So we can look at that role here. We go to our roles, and we look for that uh, read S3. And we can see this is just a, a regular role in here uh, that can be assumed and all of that. Uh, we can also see, we might not be able to see it, but we can try. In our cluster resources right here, maybe in extensions, custom resource definitions. I don't know if this will show in the, in the UI but there should be in here a place where we've created that IAM role and it should be viewable. It is viewable through the CLI. I don't think it's interesting enough to actually dig into that. So let's go ahead and, and try to exploit this. So the way Crossplane works is it has different like providers for different uh, cloud services, like cloud platforms or, or things like that. And the one that we're going to exploit is the AWS one. So the first thing that I'm going to do uh, we're we're starting from the point that we left in the last uh, video, where we were already Kubernetes admins of this cluster. So we can move freely on the cluster. So what I'm going to do first is get all the pods in that crossplane namespace. And this should get us the AWS provider right here. This is a pod, and this is the pod we're interested in. It will have a AWS Web Identity Token that allows us to essentially be admins in AWS. 
So we're going to describe that just to get the service account that this is running with. Also interesting to see the node where this is running. But what we're first interested in is the service account name right here. So I already have it in my command. And now we're going to describe that service account. Uh, OK, so we have the correct service account. Here we can see that is it has this annotation. This is what the AWS controller uh, uses to make like to say, OK, this this service account can assume this role. And the role that it can assume is this one, I believe. Yeah, this role. Uh, we can go ahead and check that role. CICD gone wrong, AWS provider, I ever say. So roles, second page. CICD gone wrong, provider, this one. And as we can see, it's an administrator role. So if we manage to get that token, we would be administrators. So previously, you were able to just execute into the cross-plane pod like in, into this pod, uh, the one that we described here, the AWS provider one. But Crossplane made a really good security effort and made that container distroless. So now it's really tough to get a shell inside of it. But instead, what, what we can do is create our own pod and attach that same service account to it because we, we're basically allowed to, to create whatever we want. So I have here a, an AWS admin pod. That's what I've called it. And the interesting thing about this pod is that the service account is the, the one that we want to steal the token from. So let's just go ahead and kubectl apply this. And this is called AWS pod like that. Do you need to supply their token or, or is it already? Uh, so I, I should. But I'm cheating, basically. <laughs> uh, we, we, it would be the same gotcha. if we did the token. I just don't want to type it. I, I'm admin currently in my terminal. Excellent. And the token is also admin. We could specify it, but it's just going to make yeah. the terminal look. It's an messy. environment variable for the sake of whatever. Good enough. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially. So the pod has been created. Uh, we could go ahead and list that pod just to make sure that it's there. And we want to get the pod in the cross-plane system namespace. In here, we should have our everything allowed pod, which just means that it's also like a privileged pod. Uh, in this case, we don't need it to be. We, we're just interested in the token for the AWS account, uh, for the AWS role. But uh, I don't know. I just copy pasted, so that's what it is. And now we can go ahead and just execute into that pod. This one should have bash. OK. Nice. This worked. And now we're copying the, we're just printing the token. This is a web identity token. And we can use this and make sure to copy the correct thing uh, with the this command right here. Uh, hopefully, I didn't miss anything that I need to copy. Oh, this looks so broken. <laughs> oh, because I'm inside. This I can do from anywhere. So I don't really need to be in this uh, reverse shell. Let me just exit. So once we've stolen the token, I can go back to my personal machine. Uh, I don't even need to be inside the cluster anymore. And I can just do this one. And I should be able to provide the token right here. Should I have my token selected? Yes. Cool. So this should give me AWS credentials to access as this role. And here are the credentials. Uh, we could export them and demonstrate that we are that role. But I think people trust it enough to, to believe that this is the role. Nice. What do you think? That's so crazy. Like. Full compromise AWS. <laughs> yeah, we've currently gone from uh, 
just write access to a pull request in GitHub to Kubernetes admin to AWS admin. Wow. That's a lot of damage, man. Yeah. <laughs> it goes to show just how, again, that scrutiny of DevOps of, uh, I don't know. It, I feel like this is certainly more of a issue than it was ever before. I don't know. Is that fair to say? Like how much, like, why did you want to focus in on cloud security um, and all the CI CD stuff? And I don't know, can I ask you now at the end of all this, uh, why did you kind of zoom in on this as your focus for a lot of security assessments and work? <laughs> yeah, I know. I really enjoyed starting when I, I started to look into Kubernetes and that then led to knowing more about cloud and getting interested in that part. I just think in the future, Enterprise security is not going to be that much more interesting. Like it's going to stay pretty much the same, phishing emails, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah. maybe the occasional like zero day that people don't patch or, or things like that, but it's not going to change that much. Cloud is so dynamic right now. Like what you learn in cloud today might not be true next month. And that's why I enjoy about it. Like you have to keep learning all the time. And I also think that's what it's going to make it so if you're a good cloud security engineer you're going to be like in a really good position for your career. Uh, if you're a mediocre cloud security engineer, you're probably going to be pretty good. Like the, the amount of people that are going to be good in cloud security is way less than the amount of people that are going to be good in enterprise security. That's my opinion. Are these about, gaps? Oh, sorry. No, no. Carlos. Yeah, I was going to gonna talk. Uh, I was going to ask Carlos about it. I'm curious too. <laughs> So, well, in my case, um, I was just doing, I was just a common uh, pen tester doing web uh, Active Directory, what every pen tester do nowadays, facing campaigns. Uh, and then I got this, this offer uh, in this company and they told me like, hey man, like, look here, we, we don't have Active Directory. Our main asset is a, is a mobile application. We don't even have a web, uh, at least not yet. And everything, everything is zero trust network using cloud. And even our computers are Mac OS. We, we don't even use Win. So it, it was like everything I know is not worth it. Right. <laughs> and I said, hey, man, like, let's go. It, it, it sounds promising just because of the, of the same reason, as you said, like many in the future, like even traditional companies are moving to the cloud. Every startup I know is using cloud. Like, in my opinion, I don't think even Windows, like Active Directory, they, they are encouraging people to go to Azure ID yeah. because they prefer people to go there. So it, it's like uh, Ignacio said, there is not a lot of people that is dedicated and learning about cloud security and CICD security. I think it's the future and the sooner you start, the better. And men, like, look, nowadays we have these crazy vulnerabilities that from a GitHub branch write permissions goes till the end and you manage to get privileges over Kubernetes, over any kind of infrastructure code, AWS, like you can do crazy stuff with a very little, little effort, just understanding how these things are working. So in my opinion, it's just a great place to be. Yeah. I also think that we are able to find a lot more vulnerabilities than if we were doing like web assessments. Like right. the possibilities of you finding SQL injection in a modern stack are relatively low with all the frameworks and all the automation that teams have to prevent it. On the other hand, there's nothing like that for cloud. Like yeah. if, if people are doing that kind of stuff for cloud, they are very advanced. Like that's not the normal cloud stack. Yeah. Are these the ones that you've kind of shown in these, what, man, we started with maybe five ideas for videos and then turned to seven as we kept doing one cool demo after another. But like, are, are these all over the place? Is this running rampant? Are there like mass, hey, we really, really got to get better at this whole cloud security thing? How bad so, is the landscape? <laughs> <laughs> so in my, in my opinion, about cloud security, the good the good part of cloud security is the good part of internal network. Yeah. It's internal, it's private. Like it, it, it's private for external companies. Like don't, don't get me started about privacy. I don't recommend <laughs> cloud at all, but we are not going to be focusing on that. So the good, the good part of the security is that every cloud stuff is internal. So at least you have that uh, protection. You can misconfigure lots of stuff, but people is not going to be able to access unless they find a way. 
The problem that I see is that once someone finds a way, it might be cognitive credentials, uh, leak credentials, uh, the vulnerability we have been commenting about that you can just access um, AWS roles from GitHub uh, repos, then you are highly probably going to be finding misconfigured roles with too many permissions. And that's cloud. This is the hardest stuff. If you want to go to the easy stuff, you just go to CICD. You just find some credentials of 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 the uh, uh, of the less important guy in the company that needs to write some code, and you are just going to be able to compromise it. Just because how it's working, CICD is nowadays not focused on protection; it's focusing on how easy it is to get to production. Wow, man! I, again, I'm sorry. I'm just blown away because it's so cool and crazy just how these things all build on each other. But this has been phenomenal, guys. Seriously, this has been uh, an absolute blast and just so cool to see you cutting up code and, I don't know, lighting off these fireworks. And I know you're doing it day in and day out over at Halborn with a lot of these security assessments and all that you're up to. Uh, but thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, making the world better with all that effort and uh, sharing the knowledge. That's what it's all about. And I'm just grateful for you guys. I don't know, uh, doing this, doing these with me. Uh, it's been really, really cool to bring these out for folks. And I hope everyone tuning in, everyone listening and everyone watching has enjoyed like man, getting to Marvel at uh, all this sweet stuff and learning a thing or two about cloud security and all of it. So thanks again, guys. I can't say it enough. Carlos Ignacio, any last words from you all? <laughs> just a thank you to you. And anytime you want me on the channel, uh, you know where to, to contact me. <laughs> I'll take you up on that, my man. <laughs> yeah, man, definitely. It's always very, very fun to, to record yeah. this stuff with you. Awesome. Thanks, all. Till next time. Bye.